After so many books of Jessica being a terrible person, we finally get the other side where Elizabeth is terrible. And oh boy, is she terrible. She uh, basically becomes a caricature of herself. And she is so terrible that she is Elizabeth the Impossible. Book 51. Has Jessica created a monster? <laughs> so the cover art... <sighs> Elizabeth, uh, I, I don't know. She looks like a cross between a kindergarten Sunday school teacher and a camp counselor. Jessica has some serious sleepy eye going on and she's not very fashionably dressed, but it's obviously her with all the purple. So this book starts with a remarkable amount of continuity where it references the article Elizabeth wrote as a junior journalist about the skating rally that the, the, the unicorns organized. And this book mentions the encyclopedias that they bought. And it also references an essay contest that Elizabeth had entered. There's a big magazine called Teen Scene and they were looking for articles about individualism and Elizabeth had written an article she wrote it in the previous book actually so nice continuity I'm kind of impressed here she, they reference it that out of all the thousands of applicants in this nationwide writing contest of course Elizabeth won it so everyone is praising her and it winds up that there is also going to be a nationwide model student contest and the school, depending on their size, they can nominate at least one student, maybe more. And Elizabeth spends the rest of the book acting as though she's already been nominated. So the teachers can nominate a student, and then the principal chooses who is going to be the school's representative. And Jessica, surprisingly not thinking of herself, she starts campaigning to all the teachers to get Elizabeth as the school's nominee. And there's like a two week process before the teachers have to formally nominate and the principal announces who it's gonna be. I kind of question why this is happening in middle school. It seems more appropriate to a high school setting, but whatever, it's Sweet Valley. So Jessica is campaigning on behalf of her sister and good grades, the Sixers, helpful, nice, all of that. And Elizabeth starts acting like she has already gotten the nomination and she becomes absolutely insufferable. She tells Jessica to quit wasting time and use her time to play the harp. She, <laughs> I'll read this one in a minute, but she encourages people to eat healthier, which is fine, but she goes about it in the completely wrong way. And she is convinced that caffeine is not good. So she throws away her parents' coffee and tries to force them to go cold turkey on a work day. <laughs> yeah, that one didn't work out so well. So everyone at the school gets sick of her. So Jessica starts to campaign that instead of Elizabeth, Todd Wilkins would actually be a better choice because he is not only a good kid, he's helpful, he's kind, he has good grades, he's also into sports. So she starts campaigning for that. And by this point, Elizabeth has realized that she is just horrible and no one wants to be around her. So she's really happy that Jessica has gone behind her back, but it's Sweet Valley, so they get to nominate two people. And of course, both Elizabeth and Todd are nominated. I'm guessing we're never going to hear the end, the, the end of this contest. Um, also, throughout the entire book, and I hated this subplot, is the presence of the character who emerged at the last two pages of last book, Pamela McDonald. And Pamela's only role in last book and this book is to fluff up Elizabeth's ego as if she needs any help with that. Everyone gets sick of her because she is just completely such a yes girl. And towards the end, Elizabeth even says, you know, I think it might be better if, if uh, we're not so close in the future. And Pamela is just kind of, okay, very nonchalant about it. And like the contest, I'm guessing we're never going to hear from her again either. 
So just a couple examples here of the horrible thing. Well, maybe not horrible. It is well-intentioned. It's just kind of obnoxious. So they get a phone call at dinner time, and it's Aaron. Elizabeth had happened to answer it. This is page 62. Jessica pushed back her chair. She had been hoping Aaron would call. And she had promised Ellen that if he did call, she would phone her immediately and tell her everything. But before Jessica could make a move for the phone, she heard Elizabeth say primly, I'm terribly sorry, Aaron, but Jessica can't talk right now. She's eating dinner. And then, to Jessica's absolute horror, Elizabeth added, Oh, and from now on, would you try not to call it dinner time? Thank you. Goodbye. And that's really obnoxious and completely not Elizabeth's place to say that. That message either needs to come from Jessica or from the parents, but Elizabeth is just really obnoxious there. Other places she's obnoxious. This is on page 83, where they're in English class a few minutes early. I don't understand these verbs, Winston said, putting his workbook on Elizabeth's desk. Can you help me? Elizabeth smiled. Of course, Winston, she said warmly. Sit down. For a few minutes before Mr. Bowman joined the class, and why is he not in class or supervising? I, let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he's in the bathroom. Elizabeth showed Winston how to figure out the compound verbs in the sentences. As she handed him back his workbook, she said, you probably shouldn't goof around during class so much. <sighs> Winston, I try to pay attention. It's just that verbs are boring. Anyway, English isn't my best subject. I'm better in science. Elizabeth, being better in science doesn't help your English grade. <sighs> no one asked you, Elizabeth. And then Ellen on the page 85 they're assigned, they have to choose a book that portrayed an important aspect of American life. Could you pick a vaguer topic? So Elizabeth is recommending that she read Tom Sawyer. I'm not sure that's uh, the best choice for our 12-year-old readers. She says, the book tells a lot about 19th century American life, and it's fun to read too. Yeah, there were some cute parts, but... Not sure that's the greatest choice. But Tom Sawyer is a long book, Ellen complained. I'll never be able to read it in time to write the report. Of course you will, Elizabeth said encouragingly. You never know what you're capable of doing until you've given yourself a chance. You just have to try. Uh, even I want to punch Elizabeth at this point. Later on, still on page 85, and we're still in the same school day. Janet Howell was an eighth grader and president of the Unicorn Club, and she was taking two pieces of cherry cheesecake for dessert. Elizabeth moved a little closer. Janet, she said, there must be zillions of calories in that cheesecake, not to mention all the fat and sugar. You'd feel a lot healthier if you lost a few pounds. I really think, Elizabeth, Janet said frostily, that you would feel much happier if you kept your nose out of other people's affairs. And yeah, it's about time. I don't generally like Janet, but it is about time that someone told Elizabeth what they think of this holier-than-thou-I-know-everything approach. Oh, geez. And then the very worst example is on page 91. 90 to 91. After math class... Jessica was asking Miss Weiler to explain the assignment again when Elizabeth came up to the desk. Ignoring Jessica, she charged right into the conversation. I've been thinking, Miss Weiler, about the decimal problems so many of the students are having trouble with. I think the students would learn much faster if you used more story problems. Story problems help people better understand an idea. I do not agree with that at all. I've spent many years doing ESL support and a lot of that was helping the kids with math and they really struggled with the story problems. I don't think more story problems are the solution. Uh, Miss Weiler frowned. Do you really think more story problems are necessary? She asked. Yes, I do. Elizabeth smiled nervously. I'd be glad to make up some for you. I know how busy you are grading papers and everything. Miss Weiler's frown deepened, and Jessica braced herself for the teacher's reply. I believe I can find a few minutes to make up some story problems, if 
and when that's necessary, she retorted. So this book, it's it's not good. This is, uh, it's probably the one that really ruins Elizabeth's character. That she's always been kind of a nosy busybody, thinks she's better than everyone else. This one really exaggerates it, and I, I do think in many ways it's ruining her character. The next book is not any better. <laughs> Uh, it's about the boosters. Yay, my favorite group. And about their conflict of whether or not they should allow boys to join their squad team, whatever we want to call it. They have a competition coming up, and I'm guessing there's not going to be any adult supervision. So that is book 52, a Booster Boycott. Will the boosters allow a boy to join their squad? I think it's a super obvious answer. Um, it was all right enough. This one, don't waste your time. Unless you want to see Elizabeth be horrendous. So I will get to the boosters next week. This was book 51, Elizabeth the Impossible. Thanks for watching. Bye.